I'm Chef Asa Tareed, and today we're going to sharpen your knife skills. Of all the tools in the kitchen, knives are the most essential. And with sharp and durable knives, processing vegetables and fruits, meats and more, becomes a streamlined task. Proper knife handling not only improves safety in the kitchen, but it can also prevent repetitive motion injuries. Clean hands and a sharp knife are a chef's best friend. Today's objectives include examining the parts of a knife and essential knife accessories, demonstrating proper knife holding, stealing and sharpening, and practicing some common cuts for preparing recipes. So why are knife skills so important? Standard cuts provide consistency in standardized recipes. Contrasting shapes and colors provide interest for the people you feed. Attractive garnishes entice adults and children to eat the meals that you've prepared. And knife skills improve efficiency and safety among the kitchen staff who use knives. So let's take a closer look at our knives. This is a standard chef's knife. When choosing a knife, you wanna look for something that fits comfortably in your hand. If you have smaller hands, you may want a smaller knife, say a nine inch knife. If you have larger hands, you might be comfortable with a 12 inch knife. Also look for a knife that feels nice and balanced in your hand. This knife is an extension of your hand, so it shouldn't feel awkward or cumbersome. Now let's look at the parts of a knife. You're most familiar with the blade and the handle, but there are other parts to consider as well, such as the blade edge, which does all the work, the part we keep sharp. And depending on how your knife is made, there may be a tang that runs through the knife. This is one long piece of metal held together by rivets in the handle. Some knives don't have a tang, like this one. It stops right here inside the handle. But all of your chef's knives are going to have a bolster where it feels comfortable to hold it, and a heel at the base of the knife. How you hold your knife is important for efficiency and to prevent repetitive motion injuries. When you pinch the knife at the base of the blade, the energy generated from your arm for cutting is transferred into the knife instead of your knuckles or finger joints. Holding the knife properly can prevent strain and injury to these joints over time. Knives are important, but so are proper cutting boards. You never want to cut on glass or any material that can shatter. You also never want to cut on metal as that's going to dull your knife. Wooden cutting surfaces have been used for centuries, but can harbor bacteria or warp if not used correctly. Plastic cutting mats like these and heavy polyethylene cutting boards are durable and easy to disinfect. Another knife accessory that is essential is a knife honing steel, which allows you to realign the blades of your knives between sharpenings. Steels don't sharpen the blade per se, but the light work of stealing or honing keeps the edge of the blade aligned by removing any small disfigurements that occur during usage. Honing steels are used by placing the edge of the blade against the steel and moving the knife up and down. You're holding the knife at about a 20, 22 degree angle and simply rubbing it against the steel on both sides of the blade. For stainless steel knives like these, it's recommended that you hone either before or after usage to keep your blade nice and sharp. To sharpen a blade, you can use a professional sharpening service, purchase a quality sharpening tool, or do it the tried and trusted way with a whetstone. Now that our knives are sharp, let's practice some cuts that you may come across in recipes. First, we're gonna start by mincing some garlic. Mincing is a really fine chop. In order to mince garlic, I like to flatten it first so it's not rolling around all over the cutting board. Next, I gather the garlic into a pile and try to cut as finely as I can using a slicing motion to cut the garlic into small pieces. Next, I gather it all back into a pile and proceed to mince some more until the garlic is all chopped up nice and small. Keep repeating the slicing motion so you get the garlic as finely minced as you'd like. 
Notice that I'm using the center of the blade. Now I'm gonna dice an onion into small dice. I'm gonna remove both ends. Actually, no I'm not, I'm gonna remove one end. Cut the onion in half and remove the skin. Notice that the root end is still intact. Next, I'm just gonna follow the lines on the onion, but not cut through the root end. I can cut horizontally into the onion. And now, making a claw, hold it all together and slice down, and I've diced an onion into a small dice. Let's cut this celery into a medium dice. This dice will be slightly larger than the onions, but it's the same slicing motion. Just move your fingers back as you go. Now I'm going to cut this carrot into a large dice. Now we're going to rough chop or concasse some tomatoes using the heel of our knife. Julienne is also known as a matchstick cut. Let's do a julienne cut on these bell peppers. Julienne is also known as a matchstick cut. When doing fine cuts, you use the tip of your knife. It tends to be the sharpest part.
I'm gonna cut this potato into a French fry cut, also known as a batonet. Finally, we're gonna chiffonade some kale, which means cut it into fine ribbons. Chiffonade is good for thinly slicing greens and herbs into ribbons. And to do that, you lay out your greens or your herbs, like basil is often cut into a chiffonade. Lay them out flat, roll them up into a little cigar, and slice. Next, we're gonna take all of our knife cuts and make a very easy vegetable soup. Come on, let's go. We're gonna start by adding about a tablespoon of olive oil, heating it up in our pot. Next, we're going to add the onions, celery, and carrots, or our mirepoix. Next, we'll add our potatoes, which I've cut down from the batonet to a bite-sized piece more suitable for soup. And goes the garlic. And we'll deglaze the pan with uh, the juice from our tomatoes. So let's add our tomatoes in and all their juices. Let's add in our kale. And then we're going to season it with some salt and pepper. and stir in our broth. Now we place the lid on and let it simmer until the potatoes are soft and they give up some of that starch into the broth and the soup's done. Proper knife usage keeps the blades sharp and a sharp knife is a safe knife. With proper knife technique, it's easy to make food look as good as it tastes. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you next time.